Are you lacking insect screens? Fret not, for the wondrous winter air may be chillingly cold, but at least it's not filled with mosquitoes and their bugging buzz. When it's summer again, then, then you may panic. But why are insects so scarce in the winter? And what happens when climate change does its thing? Let's put on some good warm clothes and wander outside to find an insect to inspect. Oh hey look, the puddles are frozen. Wait. Am I a puddle? Good question. As descendants of the primordial soup, we are all very old soup puddles. Water that most certainly can freeze, becoming solid and expanding until your cells burst. The lower the temperature, the less energy is at play and things move slower. Our bodies, our immune system and our metabolism, the chemical reactions that occur inside us to keep us alive, slow down. We can restock on energy with enough food, but other species also having to contend with the same issues in winter leads to less available food, be that a lack of leaves or a lack of insects. Furthermore, insects generally cannot afford to regulate the own body temperature to the extent that bigger animals do. That is because the smaller you are, relatively speaking, the more of your body is exposed to the outside, letting more heat escape and keeping less insulated inside your body. But they don't need to keep up their usual activity in the cold, they just need to either avoid it or tolerate it. To tolerate the cold, insects can allow their body temperature to drop. With the help of cryoprotectants, their bodily fluids can supercool, staying fluid even below their usual freezing point. Still, even supercooled fluids freeze eventually. And while insects do generate heat through feeding or burning through fat reserves, generating heat is not very efficient for them as we mentioned, making it a delicate balance. Another approach to dealing with freezing is to freeze? It turns out there are more ways than one to freeze. Inoculative freezing is the process of an insect intentionally making contact with external ice to freeze internally early. This prevents the abrupt freezing that would occur when bodily fluids supercool too far and then freeze. The slower freezing is less harmful due to the water freezing outside the cells. To keep enough energy in the winter and beginning of spring, also essential is slowing down the metabolism. As mentioned earlier, the cold already does this a bit on its own, but insects can also enter states of dormancy. Diapause is a state in which all development is paused to save energy. This can be in the form of an insect staying in a larval or pupal stage, but also in the form of an adult halting egg maturation, as is the case for convergent lady beetles. Meanwhile, cold avoidance includes insects migrating or seeking shelter in microclimates like the firebug that hides under leaf litter, only occasionally peeking outside to bask in the sun. Other insects, like silverfish, make use of the microclimates that we humans create by living inside our houses. Finally, climate change will bring warmer winters, which may benefit some insects, such as the Asian tiger mosquito, which carries viruses like Zika, Dengue and Chikungunya onto us humans, as they may suddenly be able to overwinter in regions they could not before. However, warmer, longer and more frequent warm periods also threaten to raise the energy consumption and disturb the dormancy and acclimation of overwintering insects, essentially tricking them into perceiving winter to be over. When the cold then returns, the insects are no longer prepared. Additionally, loss of snow and ice cover removes valuable insulation, exposing insects to more cold air. Some insects, like the western bean cutworm, might adapt better to climate change by burrowing deeper, creating a more stable microclimate for them. 